Thank you for joining me. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about Robert Nozick's criticisms of John Rawls's print, uh, John Rawls's theory of justice. And I want to start by talking about a first criticism that Nozick uh, offers not only of Rawls's theory of distributive justice, but of all theories of distributive justice that follow what Nozick asserts is a patterned approach. A patterned approach is just an approach that uh, tries to distribute the goods and holdings in society in accordance with a particular criterion, maybe some sort of moral criterion, or maybe a utilitarian criterion, or maybe uh, the criterion of impoverishment. By virtue of impoverishment, your impoverishment, we in our society have decided that you are deserving of a, a monthly check from the government, like a welfare system does. Uh, Nozick's criticism of all patterned approaches is that it is impossible to sustain such approaches without repeated interference in a coercive and morally unjustifiable way in the lives of individuals. The reason why is because as soon as a patterned approach to distributive justice exerts a pattern and imprints a pattern, be it a moral pattern or a, 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 a utilitarian pattern, immediately, unless that pattern is repeatedly applied again and again and again, the individuals who have been the recipients of the pattern of distributive justice are going to go out and make choices that will redistribute their holdings in other ways than the pattern initially stipulated. And he uses this with the famous Wilt Chamberlain example. I'll update that and I'll describe it in terms of the Katy Perry example. Okay, Katy Perry, famous pop singer. Uh, she is someone who's very famous and lots of people love her concerts. Okay, Nozick says, look, you may have issues with people choosing to spend their money at Katy Perry concerts. I think tickets are pretty expensive for these things. I haven't been to one. Nozick says, you may have issues with people choosing to spend their money at these concerts, but in order to stop them from doing that, and in order to make them spend their money elsewhere in accordance with a pattern that you think is more just than them, say, wanting to benefit someone who they feel benefits them. Maybe they find something in Katy Perry's music that they consider to be beautiful or beneficial, or maybe she captures their view of life. Then you're going to repeatedly need to coerce them away from their choices so that they are not able to spend their money freely as they please, because a lot of them are going to want to spend their money on this. Maybe they want to see a basketball star like Wilt Chamberlain. Maybe they want to see a pop star. Maybe they want to spend their money on cooking uh, utensils. Maybe they want to spend their money on new clothing. Whatever they want to spend their money on, if you want to keep your pattern, you're going to need to repeatedly infringe upon their liberty. Okay, now for a Rawls-specific criticism. A second criticism that Nozick launches against Rawls is more specific to Rawls's own views of distributive justice. Uh, famously, Rawls uh, offers two principles of distributive justice. Okay, there's a, a liberty principle, and then there's uh, a second principle called the difference principle. And the difference principle is the one that I want to focus on here because Nozick uh, targets it, and it asserts that the distribution of resources in society ought to be uh, in such a way that the least adv advantaged in the society are most benefited. Okay, so however, on Rawls's view, however the distribution of resources occurs in society, it ought to be it ought to occur in a way that gives the least advantage the best possible uh, option or the best possible um, path forward in terms of resources than uh, better than anything that they would otherwise have. Now, notice that this does not mean that everything needs to be equal in society, because perhaps the least advantaged would be better off in a society where the wealthy have more than they do, and the wealthy use that more that they have to invent things, to uh, create greater prosperity for all in society. And by virtue of that, the condition of the least advantaged is improved. Okay, notice that this is not necessarily just a straight up equality uh, principle, although Rawls does often say in his later works, especially, that it would be acceptable to have a society with less overall prosperity if there's greater equality. At any rate, Nozick thinks that the difference principle is outrageous, morally outrageous. 
it strikes him as outrageous for the least advantaged to say in the course of their cooperation with the most advantaged something like, look, most advantaged, uh, we want to cooperate with you in society, but only on our terms. And our terms are we want to get the most possible stuff that we can get for ourselves at your expense. And Nozick says this is morally outrageous. We can see the outrageousness of it by flipping the example. What if the most advantaged in society, the aristocrats, the incredibly wealthy, what if they said, look, least advantaged, look, impoverished people of the society, we are going to cooperate with you, but only on our terms. And our terms are we want the most that we can possibly have more under our under this system of cooperation than we could get under any other possible system of cooperation. Now, the latter example of the wealthy dictating terms to the impoverished strikes us as uh, morally outrageous. Nozick says, so should the former. The former example of the impoverished wanting to get the most possible uh, stuff that they could out of the arrangement should be just as outrageous. And the reason why Nozick thinks this is because he thinks that basically the impoverished uh, and the society that is set up so as to coercively redistribute wealth in favor of the impoverished is committing a form of theft. Um, the society in coercively taking the holdings of the wealthy, just as in coercively taking the holdings of the middle class or the lower middle class, is stealing against their will, against their consent. It is stealing the labor of their hands or the labor of their minds. And in not acting in accordance with their consent in its distribution of resources, it is acting unjustly. Any society that does that is acting unjustly. And so Nozick thinks that Rawls's difference principle is an unjust principle of justice by virtue of the fact that it uh, coercively redistributes in accordance with principles that people do not themselves necessarily uh, endorse for the sake of some greater good that the social collective has decided upon. Nozick has a variety of other criticisms of Rawls' uh, theory of distributive justice including most notably why should cooperation create the uh, problem of the distribution of justice. Uh, but these kinds of criticisms, the two that I have mentioned in this video, are perhaps the most prominent of his criticisms. Once more, they are his uh, criticism of the impossibility of all patterned principles of distributive justice. And the second criticism, the um, the injustice, deep injustice, moral injustice of coercive redistributions that act against our own will and that ultimately steal our resources from us by compelling us to do what we did not uh, individually choose to do.